Hello everyone, welcome to Wrath of Math, I'm your host Sean Ian, in today's video we're going to be proving that zero is even by way of contradiction. I did a video earlier uh, explaining why zero is even with a, a very direct sort of proof just showing that when n equals zero, two times zero equals zero, therefore by definition of an even number, zero is even, but just for kicks because I think it's kinda cool, we're gonna prove zero is even a different, more roundabout way. Uh, in this video, we're going to do it by contradiction. So let's take a look. Um, so we're su we want to prove zero is even. So for the sake of contradiction, we're going to suppose that zero is odd. And if you've seen my definition of an odd number video, you'll know that that means that zero equals two k plus one for some k that's an element of z. And this leaves us with three possible cases. Um, that would be the case where k is negative, so k is less than zero, the case where k is zero, and then the case where k is positive or greater than zero. So let's just look at these three cases, and if we can show that they each lead to a contradiction, then we will have proved that zero is even and not odd. So let's start off with the easiest one, k is equal to zero. So if k is equal to zero, I'll just case one, if k is equal to zero, then zero equals two times zero plus one, plugging zero into this equation, which would mean that zero equals one. Can't have that, that's a contradiction. So case one is done. Now let's check out case two. We'll go to the next uh, easiest, which would be when k is positive, greater than zero. So that means that um, zero, we're, gonna, we're just gonna take this one, move it over there, so we're gonna subtract one from both sides. So negative one equals two k. Now two k is the same thing as k plus k. So we're going to um, subtract a k from both sides, and that's going to give us negative one minus k equals k. So we had negative one equals k plus k, subtract one k from both sides, and you get negative one minus k equals k. So if k is positive, a positive integer, then negative one minus k is going to be negative, right? Because you're taking uh, more value away from this negative one. So it's going to be a negative integer, but it's going to be equal to a positive integer because k in this case is positive. A negative number minus a positive number is negative, so we've got another contradiction there. Now let's go on to case three, and we're going to fast forward through the first couple steps right back to negative one minus k equals k. So in case three, k is less than zero. Uh, in other words, k is negative. So if k is negative, um, then negative one minus k, which is a negative number, would actually be adding a positive number to negative one. So we can rewrite that as negative one plus the opposite of k equals k. So we're adding uh, the opposite of a negative number here, which is actually a uh, positive number. Now, we know that k cannot equal negative one because if k equaled negative one um, and then we plug that in here, then that would mean that k equals zero because negative one plus the opposite of negative one uh, is zero. And we already showed that k cannot equal zero because that leads to a contradiction. So that means since k, since k does not equal negative one and k is a negative integer, then it has to be uh, either negative two or less. So it's gotta be an integer with an absolute value uh, greater than one. So let's start, uh, if we look at negative two and we plug negative two in here, I'll just do that over here, that gives us negative one plus the opposite of negative two equals k, which would mean that negative one plus uh, plus two equals k, which would mean that one equals k. And that is a contradiction, sorry for that crappy one. That's a contradiction because we defined k as being negative and any number with an absolute value, any negative integer with an absolute value greater than one is going to, uh, to lead to a positive number here being equivalent to a negative uh, integer. 
So we cannot have that. That's a contradiction. And therefore, by contradiction, zero is even. So I hope you enjoyed uh, that little roundabout way of proving that zero is even. If you have any questions about what I did in this proof, uh, let me know in the comments. Tell me if there's any other topics you'd like to see covered. I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot uh, for watching, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math videos on the internet.